This example of a trap pales by comparison to the things that can happen to us in life. Bad things happen to good people every day. How could we possibly have got into one of these? Well, maybe poor choices we've made, mistakes we've made. Could even be the mistakes and poor choices of somebody else. Combat experiences fit in here. Memories. Likewise, the memories and experiences of law enforcement, first responders, all of us can step into one of these traps sometimes throughout our life, not knowing a way out. It can be devastating. Thank goodness for tools. It takes three of these to set that trap safely. I think they've got three of these in the ER room. Probably not. So in this upcoming whole series of videos referred to as Know Your Enemy, Reframing PTSD, 22 of these tools and growing will be presented throughout that series. For those of you that grasp on to and gain from these tools, forgive me for taking so long to put this together. If I offered you any excuses, it wouldn't be an apology. My name is Les Morn. I am not a doctor, but I'm a researcher. I've tried and tested all these proven techniques for many years. None. Let's get started. Here we are, the big picture. This timeline will be used to represent and hold a train of thought, what we're going to be talking about. So we use this symbol for infinity for the beginning of our time here on Earth. And this is you, where we are today. Can we say that if this is our past, in between our birth and where we are today, that we are a byproduct of our previous experiences. Do all these experiences in our past life affect us as to how we think on things, why we react to things, what our personality is made up of? It does. We are a byproduct of our previous experiences. So in here can be some significant events, PTSD or post-traumatic stress, which is actually labeled as any significant emotional event. That can be from us even since we're children. And there can be some, some, some significant events in there. And as human beings, we're really good at picking up baggage, trapping emotions. Most of us have never been shown tools how to get rid of that. That's what this is all about. The self-medication work, alcohol, drugs, no. What about pharmaceuticals? For the most part, no. So in here, let's go on to the road. This is where we'll be presenting 22 tools that are time proven and tested to strengthen us and help us overcome trials and obstacles. Those 22 tools, when we use them, and it's a given, you're going to be marching for a while. As you use these, and I need you to participate, to actually do these. We'll be presenting three of them at the end of this session. As you do those, in time, they will be behind us. And if they are behind us, if they are in our past, that's what will be. It will be the new you. Because we are a byproduct of our previous experiences. So I can't say enough of how important that these tools are. Which leads us to trials. I was going to put obstacles on there. But obstacles took too long to write in there and didn't look right. But they're basically the same thing. Trials and obstacles. That is, 
the purpose of life. If we didn't have things happen to us, trials to overcome, we might as well stay in the Garden of Eden. But we didn't. That is our purpose here. For we are spiritual beings having a physical experience. And why that is, as we overcome trials and obstacles, you notice the road starts at a higher plane. We're never the same. We're wiser, stronger. It's actually referred to as eternal progression. As we overcome more and more trials and obstacles, we become stronger and wiser and therefore on a higher plane. I love that saying. Knowledge becomes wisdom, our wisdom, when it's experienced. Let me tell you a quick story on that. Probably about 1970, 1971, I rented a house in Edmonds, outside Edmonds, and the landlord was a man named Chester Forshee. I never forgot him. Shorter guy, about this tall, always wore a beret. So I started building up in Linwood, um, commercial buildings with him. And one day we're sitting in a parking lot with us. He's sitting on the curb with us eating lunch. He's explaining to me, because I asked him, how did you get uh, Ferdale Art Village? And he said, well, I presented the Edmonds City Council with a proposal to build a shopping center there in Ferdale. They said, no way, we're not having a shopping center there. And he said, well, what if a percentage of those buildings are dedicated to art? Well, they thought for a minute and they go, yeah, that'd be okay. So he did. He built Ferdale Art Village. As we're sitting there eating our sandwiches, he was quite a he was quite a guy. He said, "You know, I noticed that not enough people were coming to the store, to the stores. So him and his son started another construction company. They built 110 homes, significant homes. Many of them looked like Kentucky mansions, so more people would come to the store. That's the way he thought, because he knew the rewards would be huge." When he overcame those trials, that's what made him tick. That's what we're hoping to show you. This is real. Stay with us. As we get to presenting these things, oh, and this little guy, he's actually huge. This little guy represents envisioning. One of the tools we'll be presenting, envisioning. If you can see it, if you can envision it, you can attain it. I marvel that the U.S. Olympic team uses it, many of the Fortune 500 companies, many famous athletes. As we get more into actually discussing that tool, uh, we'll talk more about it. Because small changes make big changes. Tools. Tools. Can we change our past? No man can. But we can reframe how we see and how we react to it. How do we see things as we face trials? Are these trials? Are they stepping stones? Or are they stumbling blocks? You choose, you pick. Why me? Or what can I learn from this? Once again, you choose, you pick. We can reframe as we learn these tools that we'll be presenting here. We can actually change PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder to power, triumph, <laughs> strength and determination period. We're only limited in our own mind. Most of the time we are in our way. No for certainty. Henry Ford's famous saying, if you think you can, or you think you can't, you're right. Why tools, or another word for tools, would be attributes. As an example, I live by myself. I'm never alone. I don't even know what alone means. Peace. 
I have peace for negativity and mistakes I've made. Peace for that negative loop that can go around and around and around and replay itself over and over in our mind. Is not that peace priceless? It is. And I marvel yet it's for free. We have to start somewhere, as we're all different. We're starting here. We're going to work our way up. If you're already doing some of these things, all the better. Finally, tool number one, goal setting. In essence, a plan. You've heard the old saying, no plan at all is a plan to fail. It's very important to write them down. I use three by five cards. You can use whatever you want. But when we write down our goals, surely by doing so, we can include the subconscious. Can we have more than one goal? Sure. But to begin with personal growth is paramount. If all hope is fled from you, if one of your trials is you no longer care to be alive. But staying alive is your goal. Relationships is a worthy goal. Now the, the list is endless. You choose, you pick. Put your goal list where you can see it. The fridge, somewhere. Pray for it. And start in that direction. If prayer is a stretch for some of you at this point, Stick around. I got a whole segment on that. One of the things I hope to show you that you can prove to yourself is prayer worth of it. This is a good start for having purpose. You ever notice the excitement of getting out of bed in the morning when you have purpose? Whatever that may be. We'll fine tune and re examine goals as we move forward. Number two. The firewall, one of my favorite. Would you use your computer online without a firewall? Probably not for very long, not in this day and age. A firewall of goodness. So envision with me. What will that protective firewall that you're building, what's it gonna look like to you? Maybe a bulwark, a solid rock can't be penetrated. Maybe a wall of concrete reinforced with two-inch rebar. Or maybe a shield of angels and sentinels that surround you. I have a beautiful painting by Carrie Guthrie. It's called Angels Among Us. Without her permission, I can't, I can't show her work. And I got a lot of artist's work that's stunning. But I want you to look online. One of my goals is to uh, master text over uh, video. But in the meantime, it's more important that I get this material out. So hold this up for a minute, you can freeze frame. So Google Carrie Guthrie under Carrie's art, creations. Look at the painting Angels Among Us. You can freeze frame that and, and write that down. Uh, please look it up. And while we're on that subject, most people today believe in passive healing. And that's where they go to somebody else with the concept of fix me and rely on them solely. Much of the time with pills, medications, pharmaceuticals. Can we try active healing, which is where you, you take part in this. Action and homework determine your outcome. You'll get out of it what you put into it. I say this just to start. Look up Carrie's work and, and feel what I feel. My personal firewall of goodness, every day, every day I drown myself in goodness. I'm surrounded by paintings, pictures on the wall, pictures that inspire me, music that uplifts me. I've got whole sections on both of those. And just as surely as Carrie Guthrie's painting depicts angels that can surround us, if we choose, can bring us great peace. 
That's part of how I'm, I'm never alone anymore. All good things come from God. Keep the good that you already have. Please add some of these tools to your tool belt of life. If you already have them, all the better. It's estimated 70% of our thought process is negative. We're bombarded with negativity. The list is endless. The news media being in there. A good starting place. Another one of my Google is, or whatever you use for a search engine. Full text of chicken soup for the soul. Internet archive. You can freeze frame this and write it down, but put that whole thing in. Full text of chicken soup for the soul. Internet archive. It's a good starting place. Chicken soup for the soul, I've collected them for years. I have hundreds of them. <laughs> I give them away when I do classes, and but short stories that'll touch your heart. Most of us don't got time to read a whole novel to feel good. I get them at Goodwill, used bookstores when we can get back there, and online. Of course, scriptures of the gospel of Jesus Christ have a greater depth. Some of you might not be there yet, but that's okay. There's more to come on that. Or my hope is to show you how you can prove to yourself that the teachings of Jesus Christ are real. Back off TV. Yeah, start weaning yourself from TV. I haven't had a TV, TV in two years. All mine are used for displays. I'm looking at here. So yeah, I don't miss it either. Read uplifting things before you go to sleep. I just gave you a start on some. Designate an area that you can sit and heal in where you can keep your books and scriptures. You can't have less room than I do. Someday I'll pan the camera around, you can see how small this area is. So yeah, if I can, you can. By my bedside, I have piles of books for at night. And in the morning when it's cold, by the heater, before I start my scriptures, I wouldn't leave the house without them. If you put your books, things you're studying up on a bookshelf, chances are that's likely where they're going to stay. Our last tool in this video, with 19 more to follow, is gratitude. For sure, the mother of all attributes. Once again, small changes make big changes. I'm going to talk on one of my heroes, President Gordon D. Hinckley. He was in a shoe store. As he recounted, he looked up on the wall and there was a sign. He said, I complained about my shoes. Until I saw a man with no feet. It's a matter of perspective, how we choose to see. That little example can be a good start for us to see with new eyes. It's a good example of reframing a point of view, how we look at things. I've learned a lot from my reciting what I'm grateful for. Something that I'm trying now, when things are really bad. A lesson that I learned from the Apostle Paul in the New Testament of the Bible. To be thankful for trials, no matter how bad. From a bended knee. I recite to my Creator that I'm grateful for that trial, for I know it's for my betterment. When I'm on the other side, I'll be wiser and stronger and for sure on a higher plane. And it will surely draw me closer to them. For some, that may be something new. Try it. Practice. You'll feel the difference. One can surely be assured, anybody I've ever met in life, when they look at these trials with gratitude, they always seem to make it over. Because they already know, they've done this, it's a habit that they do. They know how much uh, gratitude they have to be on the other side of all well, they've learned from it. The other thing I can guarantee is people that stay here, that only see the negative and what they don't have, they stay there, they're stuck there. And they're stuck there over and over and over. 
Let's set a baseline. We had to start somewhere. We're starting here. So we're starting at the basics and building there on so we can start proof. Proof that these concepts are true. At this point, let's match where you are in self-mastery with physical strength. Let's start with push-ups. One of my favorite. If you're out of shape, start with 10. Build from there. Do one more each day. You have no arms. Do sit-ups. If you're in a wheelchair, do curls. You can lift books, anything that you can find around that's got weight. If you're quadriplegic, lift your head and envision. Envision push-ups. Mark my words, as you use these tools and see increase, comparatively, you'll see physical strength increase. Our bodies are extremely resilient, and so is our mind. You'll see as we get further down the line, it's easy to start with doing something physical. We're going to be using later in what's called the push. By then, you'll be able to understand what I'm talking about. You might even be tempted to brag, tempted to speak of your increase. Um, neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is real. I look forward to uh, showing you the work of experts in that field. I would have loved to have started there. I love studying the brain. So in review, number one, set your goals. Write them down. Put them where you can see them. Pray on them. Number two, start that incredible firewall. Firewall of goodness. Build a little sanctuary to where you can find peace. Start number three. Start reciting all that you're thankful for. See. Envision all that you have. Be grateful. Number four, start your push-ups or whatever you decided to do. Our incredible bodies are resilient. Your increase in all that you gain is going to be a wonderful feeling to you. In closing, we'll cover a lot on the brain, especially the realms of neuroplasticity mirror neurons, which we'll talk about, they allow us to learn through imitation. Hence the importance of our last topic. Who do you aspire to be? What's your personal creed? Who's a hero or a role model for you? I've read hundreds of pioneer stories. They're pretty much my favorite. And hero stories. With each video, I'll share some of those stories that can become their neurons, if you so choose. In the pursuit of establishing positive mirror neurons, may I share this touching story? One of my heroes, Silvestre Herrera. Please put it in your search engine, look it up. It's an incredible story. I'm giving part of it. So on March 15th, 1945, Mitchell of France, he was in the 36th Infantry of the Texas Army National Guard, Company 142nd Infantry, and it was in uh, Operation Undertone. As they were walking down the road in, in unit, they came under machine gun fire when most men were running for cover, he charged them. Somehow miraculously lived as he got closer, firing his M1 Garand from his hip. Any of you have used an M1 Garand, they were extremely heavy. They had a full wooden stock on them, 30 caliber, semi-automatic. As he got closer to them, he was able to lob a couple of grenades in there, stunning them. Eight of them dropped their weapons. He single-handedly brought back eight POWs. That wasn't enough as they moved farther forward, coming under fire from another machine gun nest in the woods. They charged. The rest of the men had been throwing rocks because they could see the landmines in the area. He either didn't hear them or just kept going. As he got closer to the machine gun nest where there was more mines, 
One of them went off and shattered his right leg. Stumbling forward, he hit another landmine which shattered the other leg just below the knee. Somehow, regaining consciousness, or able to keep consciousness, he kept firing. By his own statement, my M1 was talking and the Germans understood what I was saying. Able to keep them pinned down, the rest of his unit was able to flank them and come in from the side and put an end to the carnage. I marvel at his story. Able to keep consciousness long enough as he got into the field hospital. He asked the doctor, would you please see if you can save my knees, which they did. Sent to an uh, amputation unit in Utah. 45 days later in a wheelchair, was able to receive the Congressional Medal of Honor by President Truman, with, from President Truman. Valor. I speak quite a bit about Valor through this whole series. Surely this is an example of it. This handsome picture here, at the time, was the only man to receive the Congressional Medal of Honor from the United States as well as Mexico, standing here wearing both of them. If that wasn't enough, may I share the rest of the story? Twenty-seven years old, received his draft notice. Wife, three children, one on the way. As he went to tell his father that he received his draft notice, his father said, you don't need to go, son. You're not a U.S. citizen. I'm really not your father. Your mom and dad died in Mexico from influenza when you're about one year old. I brought you into the United States and raised you as my own. Look him up, you'll see. He's got some really good quotes. Here's one of them. I thought I'm going anyway. I didn't want anybody to die in my place. I felt that I had that adoptive country that had been so nice to me. Yes, roads are named after him. Schools are named after him. I marvel at him. This is what he lived by. I'm not what happened to me. I am what I chose to become. He truly did. Going dancing once a week with double prosthesis. Most of us will never know how painful that could be. He lived the life of honor. Finished up his life as a silversmith and a leather sniff. Any of you that hear this, if you know I've looked for quite a while for any of this work that I could purchase, if any of you know where I can, please put a note after this video. I'd be glad to follow up on it. If we establish these mirror neurons like this, it can be recalled at any time. We live by them. Are these men ever dead? No, they're not. No, that we are spiritual beings having a physical experience. Know that you're loved. Stop putting the bad in. Start putting the good in. Stay with me on this series of videos and I'll prove to you that these tools have merit and are worth doing and that we can change. Remember who we are. Who we are, the land of the free and the home of the brave. I believe in you. Be all that you can be. Do it.